our search for the ultimate screenshot tool continues. And today we're going to review ShareX. And actually, I'm going to be a little bit biased about this one because this is the tool that I'm using every day for my work. So I'm well versed in this tool. But also you'll see that uh, regardless, uh, it's a very powerful tool and only Snagit can compare to it. Uh, the, the difference between the two that Snagit is for those that are willing to pay and ShareX is for those for willing to invest a little bit of effort. But the results are pretty similar between those two. So first of all, let's recap why is this is very important at all. And uh, I pre create documentation on a professional basis. I create hundreds of screenshots every day. I use them for communication, for documentation, for, for everything, basically, to explain my points to whoever. So it's very important that the screenshot tool would be versatile, quick, and it should be answering to several specific uh, needs. So we will review the initial configuration. It's very important. Those tools out of the box are are not convenient and should not be. And then we'll do the capturing some screenshots, uh, of course, editing them, very important, exporting those screenshots. Uh, there are many ways and reasons to export screenshots into various places. And overall, the speediness is very important, how quick those tools are and how helpful they are in developing uh, documentation or technical stuff. And of course, the extra features like video, GIF capture, and whatnot, you'll see. Okay, so here on this machine, I have it installed from scratch and a little bit of a disclaimer. Uh, we are not going to use hotkeys almost at all because this is a remote machine and it's not as convenient. Uh, so uh, we will just use the mouse to trigger them. But remember that basically when you use the hotkeys, everything that you see on your screen will be done uh, in a snap of a finger, right? So this is what we have initially. This is the application. It's a little bit smaller here in, uh, in terms of text. And the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to application settings. And let's see, show tray icon, minimize to tray on start. Remember main window position. And uh, yep, uh, nothing to do here. The theme, let's switch it to actually to light. So it will be visible a little bit better on your screen. Okay, and then we'll go to integration, run ShareX when Windows starts, of course. Chrome extension, there is not really a need to do Chrome extension unless you want to take full page screenshots of your uh, of web pages that uh, just need to be scrolled. So they basically, uh, after that, I don't think there is a need to do that. Personal folder, very important if you want to maintain settings in the cloud. So for example, if you will keep the personal folder somewhere in uh, Google Drive or uh, OneDrive or something, then when you move between computers, you would, would not need to reconfigure the application. Custom screenshots folder, very important. I tend to keep all of my screenshots uh, regardless uh, of uh, how much space it takes and it goes back years. Right, and then uh, the pattern is a subfolder. For example, if we want to differentiate uh, uh, them according to months or years, days, or something like that, it's very important in cataloging. So here it goes by month, and you can actually modify it. You see, there are all of those helpers that allow you to change the syntax if you want to. Actually, let's go to theme, and uh, let's try to maybe change it to. Okay, let's keep it as it is, okay. Now we go to settings, export and import, very important. Uh, and then you can export settings in history. The upload limit is uh, the distinguished feature of uh, ShareX. I think only GreenShot does uploads automatically or out of, out of the box. Other tools, I don't think that I saw it. Maybe Snagit does it, but I missed it. And then uh, the results and retries and everything that's all for uploads, right? There are a lot of uploads. We're going to touch on that a little bit later. History and uh, printing proxy, if you want to use it behind some proxy and some complex settings. So that's for the application itself. Now let's see the task settings. Okay, task, task settings is how, uh, or, or the general settings that apply to all of the tasks. So once we map the actions of ShareX, we will be basically either basing them on whatever we configure here or diverting from initial configuration. So for example, play sound, 
play sound after task is completed. The image formatting uh, will keep it in PNG because it allows transparency later on. And then uh, size bigger, that's okay, we don't need it to be. And now image effects, for example, if you want to have a watermark or an automatic border or anything like that, uh, then you you can you can have it. For example, drawings, background, border, checkboard. So you can uh, set up, for example, uh, copyright protection or anything like that, or uh, some um, styling to your images right from the get go. I I tend not to do it because to me it's very important uh, that my screenshots are edited per. Uh, Per needed basis, so I'm going to leave it out, but that's an option. Now, the thumbnails in the preview, those are just the previews, okay? That's uh, very important uh, when you want to browse the uh, screenshots that you captured inside the window. Okay, show cursor in screenshots. That's, uh, for many people, it's very important to exclude the cursor. So when it takes a screenshot, when, you, when your mouse in, uh, is in the picture, it would exclude it, and then you would not need to retake the picture because mouse draws attention. And if your screenshot has the mouse in it, then uh, people might be putting emphasis or looking at stuff that you don't want them to look at. So you can either eliminate or show. In my personal experience, I leave it on show because I do want the option, uh, but also I um, will trained to remove the cursor from the screenshot. It comes with uh, experience. So I leave it on, but for new people, I would recommend to leave it out. Region capture, let's see, use multi-region. We don't want multi-region. Uh, now, mouse right-click action, remove shape or cancel capture. Mouse middle click, swap tool. And uh, that's okay. Detect window regions, that's an automatic region. Uh, uh, detection, auto detect, control region and side windows, dim background. So that's basically when you select something, you'll see what was selected and what not. So it would be just moved to the background. And then uh, use custom info, we don't need that. A lot of uh, interesting thing. Screen recorder. So unlike other tools, this one allows you to do many, many interesting things uh, with uh, video capture, like uh, GIFs or videos of all sorts. So, for example, for screen recording, you can already set the FPS and GIF FPS, core to score sor or not core sor, start recording after a few seconds or fixed duration or anything like that. Okay. Now, when you go to uh, the um, settings, it would be using the FFmpeg, which is a free project or open source. You can click the download button and it will just place it immediately in this folder. And now it exists. So now it will be able to encode everything. And here you. Uh, can control many, many of the things that you want. For example, the sources, the video source, where, where it comes from, uh, recording devices. For example, if we want to capture audio or anything like that, right now the audio doesn't exist, and which is fine. Uh, and you choose the, the audio codec and Vorbis and MP3 on whatever you prefer and the bit rate. So for example, I usually use 192. And then when you go to the GIF, for example, you can say, well, what kind of palette you want, what kind of uh, algorithm you want to use. And here you'll see how the command is look, looks like for every one of those uh, configurations. So, for example, preset, I want to set it for fast, right? So to keep more uh, quality. And then you can export and import those settings separately if you want to. So this is very, very powerful because it gives you direct access to quality and codec. And if you capture documentation that includes GIFs, it's very important because if every GIF takes one megabyte and you have 50 GIFs in one document, you, you know what it means, right? So you can definitely change a lot of things over here. You can specify what kind of encoding to use. And I, I really like this feature because uh, for example, when I contact support, I prefer to take a short video that takes five megabytes, but includes one minute of me talking with high quality. And then I can send them what I mean instead of just typing everything, right? So very, very powerful. OCR, it's just OCR. Process OCR silently, for example, that's uh, when you take a screenshot and it extracts all text from it. So far, we've only seen that Snagit is doing. Then for uploads, you can see uh, that uh, you can change the pattern of uh, the image file that is going to store. Uh, 
And this is very important because you want to distinguish those screenshots. I distinguish them by the name of the window where I capture. So for example, that would be ShareX. And if I capture it in uh, Vivaldi, it would say Vivaldi and then specify the resolution and the date. So you control it here. This is the naming, clipboard, same thing. The filters, we don't need it. And then uh, actions, for example, if you want to add an external editor, which is there is no need for it in this application. We'll see it later. Tools and everything else. So let's go directly to hotkey. So capture region for us, we will set it to Alt 2 like this. And let's review the task. As you see, it's the same as the task setting that we've seen from before. But here we can actually overwrite. Okay, so for example, the default is after capture, copy the image to clipboard, save the image to file, and upload image to host. So I don't want to upload the image to host unless it specifies where the upload is going. Okay, so there's file naming that we have, and we don't have the default upload. That's fantastic. And then override upload, copy URL after upload. So uh, maybe I want to say do not upload, or I will override those settings and I will say upload image to host, do not. But also, I would actually yeah, I'll give it as this. So copy the image to clipboard and save image to file, right? Fantastic. When we go to general, we can override all of those settings that we captured so far. And that's fantastic. Capture entire screen, capture active video uh, window, where you can add, for example, uh, this task. Is going to be a screen capture in screen record, for example. Start, stop screen recording. And then after uh, the capture, copy the file to clipboard, save image to file, upload image to host. More or less the same thing. And we can go and, for example, uh, edit the, um, oh, where is it? The region capture, where where is it? Oh, come on. Image, effect, thumbnail, capture. Where's the video? Origin capture, screen recorder. You can override the settings over here if you choose to override them. Okay, fantastic. And then when you create a new task, you, for example, can create an R3. But what I want to do is actually capture a GIF, right? So I'm going to change the action to screen record, start, stop screen recording. Okay, and it's going to be a screen record, pre-configure region using last region. Now we just want to select the region and then we can give it a description, copy the image to clipboard, save image to file. That's all we need. All right, let's give it a try. So R3 is going to be capture GIF, although we already have it here and capture region. So let's capture uh, our very first screenshot. I click the hotkey or it can be done, for example, from here, you just click it once and it immediately gives you the opportunity. Now, you see when I point when I point in various locations, it tries to capture the whole window. So for here, it captures ShareX. I can select it and it says, do you want to upload the screenshot? I say no, because I don't want to upload. And immediately we see that I uh, did not save the setting, right? Save image to file, override after upload settings. Uh, upload, I need to exclude it. Tools, tools, upload. Can I copy URL to screenboard? Copy image, image to file. I don't know why it tries to upload at the moment. Uh, file, upload filters, upload, override, upload file naming, clipboard uploads. Okay. But it should not be part of the task. I don't understand why it behaves like this. Uh, let's say capture region, screen recorder, you know, tools. We don't have any tools, other. We don't have anything of that sort. So let's give it another try. So you see, you already have this image in a browser and you can review it by clicking on it. So it has its own, its own image browser, but it's already in the clipboard. So if I will go to uh, WordPad, for example, we can already paste the screenshots, but uh, let's do something else. Let's do something else with the screenshot just to see how fast it is. So I'm going to take a, an image of the file um, manager over here, and I'll try to capture the whole region. So as you see, it, it has a little bit of a difficulty realizing that the whole 
window over here is uh, needs to be captured. So instead, I'll just go, and as you see, it has a magnifier that allows me to be very precise in my pixel selection. And I can do just this. And immediately, it allows me to open it in Paint or open it in the built-in editor. So if I want to edit it post-factum, for example, right, I'm going to uh, right-click it and I say Edit Image. And it has all those nice features, the rectangles, and the arrows and everything can be customized in terms of uh, what kind of color you're using. Okay, and it has, for example, a sticker that you can choose and a lot of effects and you can uh, highlight and pixelate and blur and you can uh, add bubbles and whatever you want and you can manipulate the objects separately. You can, for example, rotate and flip and add effects to the image, like the whole effect of uh, basically um, uh, image manipulation effects, everything post factum. And uh, you can print, save, whatever you like. So the editing is superb. It uh, does not uh, leave any anything for you to want uh, outside of this editor. The editor is capable of doing everything you want, okay? And uh, you just leave it as it is, so let's save it, and that's it, the image is saved. But uh, this, is, uh, this is fast enough, you can edit the image, and usually I leave the editor in a hotkey, so I want the option to edit uh, post factum, and you can change the task flow to actually uh, capture uh, the image and immediately open edit an editor afterwards. But this is not why uh, the ShareX is so good. ShareX has another thing for you. So when you click, you see this bar appears at the top. So you can edit it right now. I can already select parts of it. I can have arrows pointing. I can have text. For example, uh, edit to it in various locations with various formats, and I can edit everything and change the effects and everything that I want. And eventually, I'll go to select and uh, rectangle selection like this, and it will capture the image, which is uh, which is fantastic, which is super fantastic, right? So, and if you want, you can continue in Paint if you really want to. Uh, again, it's not advised because ShareX has its own superb editing. Okay, now in terms of task flows, what it can do for you later. In terms of upload, you can upload a file, upload to folder, clipboard, everything. The workflows, it's what it does uh, in terms of uh, hotkeys and everything that you have. And tools, you can also have, for example, a color picker if you want to take a color from someplace else. Or, uh, for example, you can uh, take a color from a screen, from some place that you want to match the color. For example, if you want to match the editing style of an existing screenshot that was sourced from somebody else, right? Uh, image editor, effects, hash check, DNS changer, QR code reader, ruler. For example, you want to measure what would be the size of those screenshots, right? And then it shows you all of those nice details which is fantastic. Uh, you can also capture the last region. So when you right click, you see that it has a uh, capture uh, region, a light transparent last region, and you can have it in a hotkey. So when you have a, for example, if you want to capture all of the settings there, when you click them one by one, instead of uh, just doing it uh, for every single screenshot selecting the window until it captures it you would just have a hotkey that captures the last region and puts everything into storage and then when you need to write your document you just drag and drop your images in in their order to whatever you want so for example you can capture now and edit or uh, document later it's also an option in this application now in terms of uh, destinations so for example, you can upload images to Imageur, all of those, and you can upload files to all of those nice places, and you just need to configure them. All you need is to configure them. They're already preset. You just need to specify the accounts and everything, and you can paste text to whatever place you want. For example, if you capture OCR instead of images, you can extract text and send text to whatever you want. 
and uh, you can upload files to remote locations. You can shorten the URLs and paste them. So basically it would capture the image, upload it to a proper place that you want and create the URL and shorten the URL all at the same one click of your mouse. And then URL sharing, if you want to share it to our, some media, and for example, if you go to destination settings, you'll see that all of them exist. And all you need to do is just specify the username and the password. It can even go to YouTube if you want to upload your, your YouTube videos directly from here, right? So you capture your screen without editing or post editing and send it directly to YouTube. And there is a variation for it or for everything that you want. The URL shorteners and the syntaxes, and you can also create tasks of your own, All right? So we will go to destinations, custom uploader settings, and here you create things that do not exist. You basically specify the API keys and what kind of responses qualify as something that is applicable. So if you have an organization with a custom task flow and you need to integrate a tool into it, that's how you do it. And this is something that all other screenshot taking tools that we reviewed so far are not doing out of the box. I cannot vouch for Snagit, maybe it has an interface or ability to do it in some enterprise version or I don't know, but it's not as clear in this one and it costs money. Uh, this tool doesn't cost money and you can, for example, uh, take this tool, install it for everybody and send them a settings file that would include the styling and then they can just import it under their application and voila, all of your documentation takers use the same styling for editing the images that they take for documentations, right? So this is a super powerhouse of a tool. It's free. I don't know if it's open source. Unfortunately, it's available only for Windows because it's based on .NET and uh, it has automatic update embedded into it uh, and you can donate to them if you want. Basically, it's super strong, super strong. It has this history in, in a format that allows you to browse everything. It has all of the metadata and it goes forever. It has those this preview images uh, folder. It just whatever you want from a screenshot, it exists. The only thing is that the learning curve, right? As you've seen, we configured a lot of things, although we left a lot of them on defaults, but still, there are many, many settings. This is not a tool for somebody that occasion, occasionally, sometimes, from time to time, takes a screenshot. You really need to learn the tool. You need to configure it properly to serve your needs and essentially uh, learn the shortcuts and hotkeys. But after that, you are unstoppable. This tool is unbelievable. Uh, I mean, it's all unbelievable that whatever I'm presenting in case I need to annotate something on my screen while I'm doing it, right? So for example, I want to explain something to people on a screen and I want to annotate and I want to underline, highlight whatever I'm explaining to you right now. I can do it while doing the video. I've seen only one tool doing it for video recordings or for whatever uh, uh, you, you want it to, and it's... Uh, yeah, those are rare. Those are rare. Many of the screenshot tools, the free ones, are not capable of doing so. And if when they do, they don't allow you to use all of those images, right? Uh, it's uh, oh, sorry, all of those editing techniques. For example, you can add the course. Remember, we removed it. You can edit multiple types if you want to. Everything is uh, is available to you, and you just click ask, and you continue with operating the software. So it's good for presentations, for live presentations as well. When you do a webinar or something, use this tool at all times. It's just convenient, like nothing else in uh, that you can use. So uh, I hope you like this tool. Let's review real quick what it does. The initial configuration, yeah, it's a little bit hard, and uh, unless you really know what you're doing, so. Uh, I mean, you can do it, use it out of the box, but it's not going to be as powerful. Uh, and you do need to change some tasks because it's uh, tuned to upload files initially, right? But you don't want to do it maybe when you start. Maybe you do. Capturing screenshots is superb. You have uh, an editor that does, does it for you while you do it. And editing screenshots is possible after. You can have multiple uh, copies, you can have multiple destinations, effects. It's basically a full image editor, right? The exporting is endless. There is nothing like it. There is seriously not a single tool that can do it uh, in that fashion.
okay the speed is also superb everything is at the tip of your fingers it's immediate and the extra features are also superb i don't, didn't see so many tools added to a single uh, screenshot tool or anything any capture tool in all other places so i really really recommend this tool if to me it's definitely worth uh using it and not switching to anything else unless some contender will arrive as usual i will be reviewing some editing or screen capturing tool a year or two from now uh, to see if maybe something new arises maybe something is better and i uh, i hope you liked it please uh, you know you don't know what to do with the video i'll see you in the next